Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another thrift store transformation, where I take a boring object from the thrift store and transform it into something completely different and hopefully much cooler. In this one, I'm taking this boring duck sculpture figurine thing and turning it into this guy, this prehistoric anglerfish type looking creature that I named Sal. So if you wanna see how I did it, then keep on watching. All right, so going into this, like every video pretty much that I do, I had no idea what I was going to do with this duck. Like I brought it home and I sat here for two days trying to figure out what I could morph it into. And then magically one of those days I thought of an anglerfish and it ended up working out pretty good. So enough of that, time to get into the video. Okay, so the first step here, I am making the teeth and I'm doing these first because I'm gonna pre-bake them so that when they're hard, I can just poke them right into the clay and it's super easy and super effective. Um, here I'm using Translucent Primo and I'm just rolling out a bunch of different sizes. Now I am roughing out the shape of the lower jaw from aluminum foil and then I'm going to attach it to the duck with some masking tape. And once that's on there, it is time to cover the entire thing with some Super Sculpey. Now this is actually my second attempt at transforming this duck into something else. The first time around, I wanted to do some sort of like abstract fleshy alien thing, but then that was kind of like too easy, so I wanted to do something a little harder, and I'm glad I decided to do this instead. Oh, and going forward with these um, thrift store transformations, I want to make a new rule that says I cannot modify the original piece at all. It has to stay completely intact, just like this duck does. Um, I think that'll be fun and a little more challenging. Now I'm just mixing some translucent primo with some red Sculpey to create translucent red. And this will give it a little more depth and whatnot after it bakes so that it's not just flat Play-Doh looking red. And then this is actually one of the very few times that I will be using colored clay. I only use it for areas that I can't fit my paintbrush. And once all the teeth are in this thing, there's no way I'm getting my paintbrush around them. So this is just the best way to do it. And yeah, normally I prefer not to use colored clay just because I don't think I'm patient enough for it and I end up making a mess and mixing the colors together. So I would much rather um, paint my sculptures. And now I'm creating the upper lip for the fish using a rope of clay that tapers at each end and then blending it in with the rest of the fish's body. And now I can't help but notice that the duck is starting to look really weird, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. Now for the eyes, I pre-painted the backs of these 25 millimeter cabochons with some color shift teal. Um, the color shifting ain't that crazy, but I like the color enough to use it anyway. Now to attach them to the sides of the fish, I am flattening out a round piece of clay, pressing that into the side of the fish, and then I'm going to firmly press the cabochon into that so that the clay kind of squishes out from behind it and anchors it in place. Like that. And then you can see here, this is the perfect example as to why I do not like colored clay. There's red clay all over my Super Sculpey, but that's fine because I'm painting it and I'm not worried about it. But if I wasn't painting it, that's a huge problem. All right, now I am blending the clay around the eye with my ball stylus into the body of the fish and also using my finger to smooth everything out. And then now I am prematurely adding bacon bond to the jaw. Um, you'll see later, I end up having to take the teeth out that I put in because I can't get behind them to do the other teeth on top. So this was kind of a messed up step, but that's how I attach the teeth. And believe it or not, it's really strong. Like those things aren't going anywhere after this thing's baked. All right, now I'm adding the second tooth that I will have to remove too, but now I'm texturizing the inside of the mouth using my large ball stylus and then I'm adding some bacon bond to where the upper teeth will be going, like so. And then I'm just pressing those into the bacon bond and the clay, like that, for every single one of them. And for this design, I want the teeth in the middle to be longer than the teeth at the end. And that's what I did. Now I'm pulling out those bottom teeth like I said I was going to earlier, so that I can get the rest of the top teeth in. 
They came out pretty easy and then went back in really easy so everything was fine. You can't be perfect the first time every time. All right, now I'm rolling over that upper lip like that and then making sure it's shaped the way that I want it to be. And now I'm blending out that edge one last time and smoothing it out with my fingers. And now I'm gonna add some extra flaps or folds of skin over the top of that just by leaving one edge the way that it was rolled and then blending the other edge in with the body. And that made for a cool little detail. Now I'm just refining everything and adding the bottom teeth back into the jaw. And believe it or not, it may not have looked like it, but the, it was really hard to get behind them when they were there. And on top of it, I have really big hands. So that was an issue. Now I'm just going ahead and adding the rest of the bottom teeth, doubling some of them up, shaping out that lower jaw, getting it to look exactly how I want it to. And I remember when I was doing this, I was so excited at this point because it was actually turning out good. And I had no faith in the beginning that this thing was gonna be good enough to use. All right, now I'm gonna create some bioluminescent spots using six millimeter cabochons and glow-in-the-dark clay. To make these, I am making an impression with my medium ball stylus, adding a very, very small piece of glow-in-the-dark clay, and then following that by pressing my cabochon into the hole that I just made with the glow-in-the-dark clay. And I'm not worried about the clay coming out from behind the cabochon because, like I always say, I'm painting it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> And I just repeated that on the other side. Now I am creating the tail fin from aluminum foil and attaching it with masking tape and covering that whole thing with Super Sculpey. Alright, now to create the bioluminescent lure, which is that dangly appendage on the fish's head, I pre-baked a ball of glow-in-the-dark Sculpey that I will attach to, I guess, the front of the duck, the duck's bill, um, with some Super Sculpey that I'm blending in right now, and then I am going to just press that pre-baked ball into that clay, and then that's going to hold it in place, and then I do add some Bacon Bond as well to reinforce that connection. I was really worried about this falling off in the oven and it actually didn't. I was really surprised. So sometimes breaking rules can be okay when it comes to polymer clay at least, right? Oh, and then in my research that I did after I sculpted this and after I filmed the video, I discovered that only female anglerfish have the dangly appendage with that bioluminescent lure. So yeah, the males don't. Technically, Sal is a female. Maybe Sal is short for Sally. Or maybe she likes Sal. I don't know. Let's not worry about that and let's detail some fins. All right, now let's take a look at my first attempt at the dorsal fin. I don't like this one, so I take it off. <laughs> let's try that again. Gotta fix everything I just screwed up. Yep, yep, looks fine. All right, now I'm making another fin and seeing how this one goes. Nope, don't like that either. Time for a third option. There we go. Let's blend that baby in. All right, now I'm creating some bumps along that appendage thing and because this is an alien prehistoric monster anglerfish that appendage is a lot thicker than a normal anglerfish just keep that in mind and I'm just kind of disguising the duck head with these bands of clay and I think it looks cool and I kind of wish I would have put a couple more but it's too late now all right now I'm just adding some final details to the fins using my dental tool here like that and I'm just making 50 million of them until it looks like a fin and now I'm creating a pectoral fin that is similar in shape to that dorsal fin that I just put on and 
The reason I'm putting these on last is because I was holding the fish a lot from where the pectoral fins are, so I didn't want to smash them, so I saved them for last. Now I'm adding the gills using a rope of clay that tapers at each end, and I create two of them. Then after that, I am using my pearlizing tool to create a scale texture over the entire back of the fish, just randomly placing circles everywhere to get the effect that I want. And it looks pretty cool. Now for the final details, I'm adding some wrinkles to the end of the lure here, like so using my pin tool. And then I'm going to create some more bioluminescent spots along the back making an impression with my medium ball stylus that I then fill with um, glow-in-the-dark clay and press a cabochon into one of those six millimeter cabochons like I use in the front. Now once I got all those in, let's see how it glows. Wow, pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with this. Wow, check out that lure. Now to create some more interest, I'm just adding a nice little piece of flesh down the front here and creating indents in between the teeth. Like I said, this adds another layer of detail, some more interest, just makes it look finished. Now it's time to finish up that base and I'm just covering that with clay. And then the method that I use to texturize it is actually really cool and really easy and really effective. And you'll see that in a second. Shaping out that base. No more duck feet here. All right, now to texture the base, I want it to look like rock. So to do that, I am just balling up a piece of aluminum foil and I'm gonna press the foil into the clay and this creates a wonderful, super easy, super effective rock texture. I mean, like look at that. Like really, re really look at that. Like freaking awesome. And I'm just going over the entire base with my aluminum foil like that. Now for the last step of the sculpting process, I am brushing the entire surface with a very generous amount of clay softener. This smooths everything out and removes fingerprints. And I do this with everything that I make. And it's time to bake after like 45 minutes of brushing clay softener on it. And then fresh out of the oven, I'm doing a quick inspection to see if there's any cracks or problems I have to deal with. And it's looking pretty good, nothing to fix. And it's time to paint. Now painting this was a little nerve wracking for me just because there really isn't going back when you're trying to maintain the translucency of the clay like I was. Because if you try to remove the paint after you've put it onto the sculpture, you're gonna use like mineral spirits or like paint thinner or something and that's going to seriously degrade the surface of your sculpture too. Even if it is cure, cured, you're gonna lose some details. And I know this from personal experience. I had a sculpture that I spent way too much time on that I completely destroyed with mineral spirits. Not even paint thinner, mineral spirits. And I don't know if I was using like way too much or what. I just know that I had to use a lot because it wasn't taking the paint off with just a little bit and I just screwed the whole thing up. So if anybody has any other suggestions for how to remove paint from a cured sculpture, let me know. All right, and as you can see here, I am just using some watered down dark blue paint that I made with primary blue and black, obviously. And I'm just painting it, wiping it off, painting it, wiping it off, painting it, wiping it off until I get to a point that I like. And then I'm stippling some texture here and there, everywhere. <laughs> and I'm just darkening his back a little bit with some darker blue that's almost black. Obviously made this by adding more black to my blue. And I'm just creating a nice little gradient here. And he's looking pretty good, shading some areas. Getting closer to the final form. Now I'm shading these folds here and these were really satisfying to paint because they came out so good on my first try and they were really easy and I love when that happens. Now I just darkened the mouth a little bit and I'm just shading the fins, making everything nice and detailed, not missing a spot. And now I'm going in and highlighting some areas, 
and to make the highlight color I added some white to the dark blue that I made. Just highlighting all of the raised areas on it. And I was really happy with how this was turning out. All right, now I was a little skeptical about doing this, but I wanted to create a little bit of a iridescent um, color to it. And I did this by watering down um, some color shift purple paint. And this created a really cool effect. And as you can see, as I keep going, I'm getting more and more confident within the paint that I'm adding less water to it and trusting it more. And I really like the end result. It's really cool looking. And then here to get rid of that harsh edge where the red clay meets the beige, I am just taking some red paint and brushing that out. Now I'm creating some little veins on top of the lure, like so, using my extremely fine paintbrush, creating some more veins down here. Again, this just takes it to the, another level. Just the more detail, the better in my opinion. More stuff to look at, more things to notice. Now I'm taking a toothpick to scrape off all of the paint that got onto my cabochons when I was painting. And that's a really um, great perk to using glass in your sculpture like this because you can just scratch the paint off. You don't have to worry about getting paint on it. It comes right off super easy. Now I'm painting the base with a dark brown and then I'm wiping it off with a paper towel to create the highlights. And then last, I am taking some color shift green and creating more veins on top of the ones that I already did. Again, another level of dimension, another level, another level of interest and all that good stuff. Now to create a beautiful glassy wet like finish, I am glazing the entire thing in resin. And if you haven't resin glazed before, there is a little bit that goes into it. I will be creating a dedicated resin glazing tutorial in the future, but I just love this process. It is so satisfying to me. I love how the resin brings out the colors in the sculpture. I love how it increases the contrast, the saturation. It's just, it's amazing. And on top of all of that, it's reinforcing the sculpture as well, because when it's hardened, it is essentially plastic. So. That's awesome. You're protecting your piece and you're making it look great. Can't beat that. And it's done. Our journey from duck to prehistoric monster alien anglerfish is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's a wrap everyone as always I hope you enjoyed the video I hope I at least entertained you for a couple minutes during your day or maybe you took one or two things away from this that you can apply to your artwork so with all that said thank you for being here be sure to like and subscribe follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ace of Clay I will see you in the next one thanks for watching